G'day guys, so I'm often asked the question, how do I level up when I enter a server? Because I have started on quite a few servers. Well, there's no one amazing trick that I have to level up quickly. So in this video, I'm just going to go through a few of the methods I use as I progress through the levels and hopefully keep the boring grind to a minimum. So the first thing I do when entering a server is to explore the place and find out what's where. And since this involves a lot of running, you're using up a lot of stamina and you've got to keep feeding yourself as your hunger goes down quick. So everywhere you go you're smashing the Y button on Xbox, the E button on a keyboard to pick up and forage everything you run over. And with everything you pick up, you're gaining a little bit of XP. As well as the berries you need to feed yourself to keep yourself going. So you'll push yourself through the first few levels doing just this. And the two things I'm usually looking for is one, an abandoned base with an intact forge and a smithy. As you'll probably need these before you have the ability to make them. So that shouldn't be too hard to find on a PvP server. Wooden bases are always broken into. The other thing I'm looking for is a base where I can easily pilfer the fertilizer from. And this one is looking pretty vulnerable. Stealing fertilizer isn't such a big deal on Primitive Plus where you can easily make it from keratin. But on other servers you don't want to have to have a pig when you're playing by yourself. It's just a pain in the ass that you don't need. Now with all this running and foraging you're going to end up with a lot of fibre. And the most efficient way of converting that into XP is by making hats. I level up my movement speed and my weight first. That'll help when we get to the hunting phase. As you can see, making a hat on the early levels can give you a good XP boost. And it's using fibre that you have no use for anyway. When comparing hats to shirts and pants, you can see you get three times more XP when making hats. 0.6 for a hat, 0.8 for a shirt and 1 for pants, but they cost a lot more fibre. Now you do get more XP making other things like storage boxes where you can get about 3.7 per box combined with 0.3 for every tree you chop down, but that's really grindy and you're not exploring at the same time, so I don't usually do that. I usually find when I'm finished exploring that I have enough levels to start hunting. So in summary, smash the Y button everywhere you go to pick up food and fibre, explore to find the abandoned forge and smithy, find some vulnerable bases and convert that fibre into hats. Anyway, the second technique that I use is passive levelling. And by that I mean the XP that you get for doing nothing. So here what I'm doing is just laying down and seeing how much XP I get over the next 5 minutes at level 19. And what that showed was the XP increased by 3, water went down 2.9 and food went down 0.4. Meaning you get 36 XP an hour, 2.9 hours till you dehydrate and 20.8 hours until you starve. Thus you can get 104 XP until you dehydrate or 749 until you starve. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, the best way to achieve passive levelling is to just find a safe place out of the way of feral dinosaurs or other people. Lay yourself down. Now, unfortunately on Xbox, you will get timed out if you just lay there. So, you have to use the plug and play kit to keep your Xbox controller on, as well as use an input by putting a rubber band around the stick. So it's always receiving that input so it doesn't time out. Now you can change the channel or turn your TV off and just leave your Xbox on. In this case I used the Xbox power settings to turn the Xbox off after 6 hours. So next time you log on you'll have a lot of XP to level up with. So this is when you're by yourself, but it actually works better when you're with a tribe. 
as you're gaining that shared XP. I don't know what Jackie's doing here, but making narcotics or something. But I'm getting one XP every time she does it. So leaving yourself online around your base has big advantages, and not just for XP. The dinosaurs in your egg farm won't lay unless you invent the distance of them. So by keeping yourself online at the egg farm means whenever a tribe mate comes back they'll have a lot of eggs to pick up. So every half hour to 45 minutes go back and check the eggs and there'll be a lot to pick up. So to sum things up, you gain 36 XP every hour, but only in the low levels. Once you pass a certain level, you won't get that anymore. With the Xbox, you have to use the play and charge kit, otherwise it'll time you out. You have to keep spinning around in circles. Stay outside if you can, because you dehydrate far faster than you starve, and the rain will keep you alive. Staying around working tribe mates will give you shared XP, and try and stay around the egg farm to promote them laying eggs. Okay, so you've got to a level where you can start hunting without just getting yourself killed. And one of the best tactics that I use is the bait trail along the swamp. Now this does have a real world analogy. Here and me and a mate are going to go fox shooting, but we're going to drag a trail of a dead pig along the road. And then when we come back along the road, the foxes will be there waiting for us. So they're being drawn in by the scent, making them easy to pick off. And we're going to use this same tactic to draw the dragonflies out of the swamp. You can drag a dilo, but they weigh about 35, whereas a dodo weighs 25. So you don't get encumbered so easily. You'll also notice when you're dragging them, their decomposition timer goes up to about an hour and a half. So you have no worries about it decomposing. Anyway, just grab your dodo and run along the swamp. For doing this, you want about a minimum of 126% movement speed. That's what I have here, and that'll keep you in front of the dragonflies. You'll hear the buzz behind you, but don't turn around. That'll slow you down. Now when you think you've rounded up enough, just pull out your pike and turn around. The dragonflies will be raging on you since you've been careful with the carcass. And then you can pick up the dodo again and carry on. I won't level up in this case because I'm already level 90. But in the lower levels you can easily jump two levels just doing that. Here I had to put on half a level from 64 to get to 65 to get that yellow drop falling next to me. So I'll just round up some dragonflies. So short of killing an alpha, dragonflies tend to give the biggest jump of XP purely because of the volume in which you kill them. Now on the lower levels you may want to maintain your infection which you lose whenever you level up, so just kill yourself near one of your beds. Respawn. And infect yourself off your dead body. This is done to keep your movement speed high.
then you can use your dead body to continue dragging it along the swamp. It weighs a little bit more than a dodo, but it's the second best thing to use. Now in summary, harvest dragonflies for a quick XP boost, which is easiest done by dragging a dodo along the swamp, with a minimum of 26% movement speed so you stay in front, and you may need it to use infection to keep that movement speed up. And on to the final topic, which is killing alpha dinosaurs, which is the quickest way to level up. So in this case, I found an alpha carno and invited my young mate into the server. Handed him my crossbow and let him go to it. So he's been in the server all of a few minutes and killing that one dinosaur took him right up to level 39. Now this is during double XP weekend so it is going to be a bit inflated but I did do the same with Jackie earlier. Um, not on a double XP weekend and she went up to about 27 from memory of an alpha raptor. Now there is a specific boat design that I use to kill alphas. So in this video I'll just show how to lay the foundation down for the bare basic of what you need to kill any alpha up to alpha X. There's not a day that goes by that someone tells me that this doesn't work anymore but it always does. Lowering the foundation with pillars. So you do need to lower the foundation to just above the raft. So place a pillar over the mast. Place a foundation next to it. Place the pillar in the foundation. Find the lower snap point next to it. And just keep repeating that. The lower snap can be hard to find sometimes and that's why I assume people think it doesn't work. But you just got to try different angles until you find it. If all else fails, back up as far as possible until it comes down. And lower it once more over the rudder. and fill in the rest of the 3x3 foundation. Now we need to extend the back by one square. So that's sealing out and snap foundation underneath that. That one snapped a bit low, but we'll sort that out later. Throw a couple of ramps down off the sides. If you're on a hostile server, you may want to chuck a hatch frame down over the rudder to protect it. And now what I'm going to do is make a stacked foundation barricade at the back. So a ceiling off the back centre and a pillar down from that. And now you can stack the foundation underneath the foundation. And now get rid of the ceiling and pillar.
for alpha x's you're going to need the foundation barricade five high so just keep repeating those steps You may be thinking, well, why didn't I just build a wall down? Well, it doesn't work. If you just build a conventional wall, the alpha dinosaurs will just sink down and start attacking it. But by making a stacked foundation wall, they'll keep trying to walk up on top of it, staying on top and letting you pike them in the face. Without the barricade, they can slip underneath the boat and cause all sorts of grief when you get stuck on top of it. Okay, so one more. Okay, so you don't actually need the full solid wall. If you're building a larger boat and you need the pieces available, you can get rid of some. Okay, so now the two bottom foundations are to stop Alpha Rexes, the next line up is to stop Normal Rexes, and the two lines on top are for the Alpha Carnos and Alpha Raptors. None will make it past this barricade. Now, how does it work? So, all you have to do is lure an alpha dinosaur out into the water. Have them approach from the back of the boat where they'll get stuck. Now you've got to stand just out of reach of them. And they'll just stand there looking at you. Move too far back and they'll start eating the boat. Alpha Carnos and Alpha Raptors are easily piked to death doing this method. Because they're running into foundation, they'll just stand there trying to get up on top of it. They will turn and run when their health gets too low, but since they've got nowhere to go, they'll always turn around and come back. They'll always turn 180 to run away, so try and point out into open water. Alpha Rexes work the same way, except they sit much low in the water. And you might notice the front railing that I've put down. Keep your back against that. You'll need three and a half squares of distance between you and the back to stay far enough away from the Rex to stop him biting. The only issue with Rexes is that you can't pike them. As soon as you're close enough to pike, they'll start biting you. You can try and sink them and pike them underwater, but that's a pain in the ass. Okay, so I've now shown the bare basic foundation that's needed to keep the alphas back. Now I'll just have a quick look at the boat that I'm currently fielding in the official servers. So this boat's specifically made to kill alphas. And it's the sole reason I'm the highest level in the server. You get a lot more XP by killing the alphas by hand, instead of using a mouth like a Rex or a Giga. It's a very large boat, but there's enough pieces left over to fully furnish it. And I'll keep a Lystra on board to boost the XP gained from Thames, if you need to do that.
It's a very long boat. It's as long as you can make a boat in Nark. And the foundations in this case are floated rather than stacked. But they do the same thing. Access to the booster end of the roof is done by from inside the cab up through a hatch frame in the ceiling. And of course it can't be an alpha killing boat if it doesn't have an alpha trophy on the front. Plants are useful for pulling alphas off the beach. Just do a drive by on them and, and they'll follow you out in the water. And the blister tub's there if you want to stab a Rex in the face. So this boat works exactly the same as the platform that we saw before. Stand just out of reach and pike the carnos and raptors in the face. Every now and then they will turn and run, but they'll always come back. This boat provides most of our prime meat cooked up in the grill inside. I'll give the Lystra a pat. I'm not sure if that works for teams you have sitting on the shoulder or not, to boost their XP. The cutout on the side was useful during Halloween to kill the Alpha Rexes, as the skeletal dinosaurs didn't sit as high up in the water. So, finally, in summary. Alpha's a lot easier to kill off a boat, and you gain a lot more XP by killing them by hand rather than with a tame, unless you want that tame to take all the XP. Use a stacked foundation barricade, not a wall, or they'll just try and bite through it. Alpha Raptors and Kanos can be piked, but you have to use ranged weapons for X. You can't get close enough without them biting you. Stand just out of reach of them, or they'll start biting the boat, not too far back. And point the boat out into open water so when they turn and run, They'll have nowhere to go, they'll have nothing to eat, they'll come straight back to you. Anyway, that's it guys. Um, I've been absent the last few months, so I'll try to get back into this video making now. I have had a bit of trouble with YouTube. I can't comment on, I can't reply to comments on my own channel. Sometimes I have to sign into my other account at FPS Outback and come back and reply to people that way. So, I do apologise to all those people that have asked questions over the past couple of months, guys. I just haven't been able to reply to them. So, if you see a comment from FPS Outback on this channel, you'll know it's me. And catch you in the next video.